Hello happy YouTubers! Welcome back! My name is Marcelina. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how you can control insect, pest, and fungus disease of your citrus tree. Stay tuned! Be right back! There are three ways method of application you can use for controlling insect, pest, and fungus disease of citrus. I'm going to share this information with you and show you how to do this. So take this information as much as you can. Before we begin, if this is your first time here, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Alright, let's do it! Coffee is good in the late afternoon. Thank you, Maestro. <laughs> so if you guys notice uh, pest infestation of your citrus, you can apply a trapping method. This is a yellow sticky trap. You will see this more frequently used in a large greenhouse or used by farmers and gardeners who grow crops organically. So if you guys don't like using harmful chemicals to your plant, consider this as one of your alternative methods of prevention. You can get this in your local nurseries or you can get this online or you can have it as part of your do-it-yourself project. So what a yellow sticky trap does, insects, are attracted to the yellow color and then the head to the trap get stuck can't get out and die problem solved what a way to die huh <laughs> so that is the use of this uh, this trap and i'm going to show you guys how to do it so i will put this coffee here i hope it doesn't fall so sometimes you can get this with hole in it and the uh, tie but i don't have hole so what you need is because this is sticky so i would cut a hole first just like that and then i'm going to peel so you just peel this this is really sticky just like that oh that's sticky and then i use the zip tie because it's easy for me to use and uh, what you need, I already have it in here, so I'm going to put put in here. So you just tie the zip tie in the branch of the tree. Just like that. Just like a Christmas tree. So that is easy. Or you can put in the stick and then place that in the container close to the plant. And I already have that trap in there. I'm going to show it to you the trap. Hopefully you can see it. Does, so, that mean if, does that mean if I wear a yellow shirt in the summertime, I'm going to get so a bunch have, of I have that trap, so jumping all I, over me? I caught, what is that? In, what insect? The, these are female, the female gnats, uh, fungus, gnat fungus gnats, flies. and also flies and aphids. So you can, this is a good way guys to identify what type of insects you caught in the trap. So that is a natural way of prevention if you want to do like this. Now, so now we know that yellow color is attractant. So if you go to the park, you may consider not wearing yellow clothing because those insects or honeybees probably chasing you all the way <laughs> because they want, uh, hold on to that, because they want to uh, pollinate you because they think you are flower and also maybe the would like to suck the juice out of you so be aware now the other ways guys that you can control the prevention so i have greg steven here and he's going to talk about the diet diatomaceous earth now de. or de so i'm de. going so before we talk about this guys what i always uh, uh remind my students that you need to know the products that you're using what products that you use and what is that targeted for because otherwise you would be disappointed if it doesn't work because it is not the uh, type of problems you're targeted for so greg is going to mention this diatomaceous sir hi guys good to see you today what we're going to be talking about is de diatomaceous earth this is really a neat stuff that we just started using a few years ago when uh we actually got this from john kohler and his video where he actually eats some of this stuff. He eats the, the food grade diatomaceous earth. <laughs> and uh, I, I wouldn't go that far. He doesn't advise it, but he just wants to show you, you don't that it have safe. to eat it to no, be don't eat, don't eat the stuff. This what is this is, diatomaceous earth is actually 13 million years plus of small algae um, 
that dye and go to the bottom of the ocean and the organic part of the uh, diatom dies but what's left behind is the silica shell mm -hmm. and the silica shell is like little tiny crushed pieces of glass and you can put this in your water put a teaspoon in your in your water stir it up and and water your plant with it the silica will remain on top and maybe in the very top layer of, of your soil. So you might have to show them how to apply it. Yeah, we can show them. It's yeah. pretty easy. Just take a teaspoon, stir it in a glass of water. It looks like milk okay. and just pour it right on your, on your plant. And what happens then is when your insects try to get in the soil, these little parts of silica or glass gets in between their joints of their waxed um, shells. And it's like having glass inside of your shoe. It starts cutting you up and they, they die. And this was also very good if you have um, slugs and other things like that, they're little creepy crawlers. Oh, this will tear a slug up like uh, like he, he'll never see tomorrow. Also, hold on the top. So this diatomaceous earth, guys, is not for fungus. So for those of you who might apply this for your fungus, like black spot or this spot, this is good only targeted to what is pest targeted. Control. Is We're pest control. Pest control. Pest controls. Yeah, pest control. We're looking at, we're looking at things like grasshoppers. Atropods, just atropods which is the exoskeleton. Slugs, when I say exoskeleton, that crickets, means that ants, animals, silverfish, cockroaches, uh, yeah. <laughs> centipedes, bed bugs, any of those insects that are um, in your garden or in your in your pots and plants. But uh, yeah, this, this stuff is so really good. So mostly that is by your sides, right? In fact, by this works side, if yeah. you have cockroaches in your house, this stuff works magic where insecticides don't work this stuff will will kill them I've, I've read the studies that this is done on cockroaches and this is like number one so, so there are two of them you use the food grade right because it's only this is made by bionide and this it says right on here for crawling insect killer and so you need to read the label guys before yes. you apply it i would i would say it comes out too heavy if you use the the, the spout here i put it like a salt shaker and it, it just take it and shake it like that real nice and easy and just get it on the top. You can just sprinkle it right on the top of the soil or you so can only, put it in water. you need one teaspoon, right? Yeah, or you can just put it on a salt shaker and shake it on the top of the soil. And then when you water it, it'll go in. But if you're afraid it's going to get blown away or something, yeah. eventually it's going to get wet into the soil when you water the plant, right? So, you so can do it, one of it these said that it is not harmful, but it is so... Does no, not because it is the dust, pH. Yeah, it's dust, you need to protect yourself. You have to wear mask so that the dust yes. doesn't come into you and inhale it. Now, if you in inhale the, it, it's, it's going to do the same the thing run. to you that yeah. it does to the insects. It's going to get in your lungs. It's going to cut your lungs <laughs> up like asbestos does. So you do want to, you do want to make sure you wear a mask when you start working with that stuff. Okay. So how you apply it? So he's going to well, show you guys. A, uh, a there's a, a spoon in there in the, uh, in this in here in this uh, fertilizer. All right, All right, so he forgot his mask, guys, so he just make sure that it doesn't blow the dust. We're in. adding it to water, so we're not going to be sprinkling <laughs> it and making it airborne. So it is easier to use it in water? One teaspoon. One teaspoon in how much water? A little over a quart. A little quart of water. Just put it right in there, mm -hmm. like that. Or you can hold your breath. <laughs> It if you don't expose too all the time, so you're okay. But prolonged exposure is not good for your lungs. Where do you want to put this in? Okay, you can apply it in here. All right, we're going to go ahead. Can you see that? Or just, you can use the I'm bottle just, spray. I'm just going to add it just like I would water the plant. Yeah. No or if you deal. do this spray, if you put that in this bottle spray, you can spray it. You can spray it right on the foliar, as a foliar spray. Just put it right on the plant. Mm -hmm. Put it on here, give it a little bit to this rose. What is your foliage? So that is uh, to prevent slugs and snails. So the problem we have here is the slugs of our citrus and it eats that BB shoot. Love. So this one is effective only if in the dry side. So let it dry because if it is wet, it, you know, it is not effective for destroying or killing the, the slugs. All right, so the other ways you can control pest and fungus infestation, guys, is the application of neem. So you can apply the neem in powder form or you can apply in 
in oil. All right, let me take over here. So he's going to take over. <laughs> I'm gonna take over. All right, I got two forms of neem I want to show you guys today. One is the pure 100% neem oil, first extraction. This is pure neem with a total amount of azetaractin in it. This is not a um, hypotropic neem oil. This is pure. This is what you want. You don't want that cheap crap they sell you up there at Home Depot and Lowe's. This stuff is the real stuff. You can buy this online. I'll put a link below. You guys can find it. Yeah, we get a couple cents commission if you buy it from our website off of Amazon. This is another one I like. This is pure neem powder. Uh, this is used in many different ways. They even use this as uh, skin care and hair care. That's how easy this is. You don't want to breathe the uh, the powder from here, but it's very safe if you get it wet on your hands or whatever. It won't harm you. This um, You can use this in a spray or you can put it right onto the soil and then uh, or take a little fork or something and rake it into the soil. Either way, it's going to work just as well. This works extremely well on the soil to get rid of your uh, fungus gnats and it also will deter any other crawling insects that come onto your plant. Uh, I use this predominantly in the soil. This one I like to use on the leaves. I think the neem is best. It's pretty hard to beat, I'll tell you what. It's, it's very good stuff, it's, it's safe, best. it's or totally organic. If you're into organic gardening, you can't beat this stuff. This uh, little bottle has a little measuring thing here. It shows you a, a quarter, quarter of an ounce to a half an ounce and you use a quarter of an ounce per quart of water. I use one full ounce to fill up my my spray bottle right here. I put this is a one gallon sprayer, so I put one a one full ounce and I put two capfuls of liquid soap detergent, which is the emulsifier uh, that keeps it in a suspended animation. So that when you spray it, even so though, uh, you want to keep it at above 65 degrees to make sure that that neem oil will separate from the water, even with soap in there, will a little bit. So make sure you shake it up uh, before you use it, and I keep shaking it up even as I'm using it to make sure that I'm keeping an even disbursement of the uh, neem oil in there. Good stuff, guys, good stuff. But I'm going to give you a warning here. You want to test this on your plant before you spray it. Uh, you make some plants are very sensitive to neem, and like. it will burn the leaf and it will kill, especially like with uh, hibiscus. hibiscus plants. Hibiscus doesn't like neem oil. So what you do is you take a small section of the plant, you spray it, wait till the next day. Never spray this stuff on your plants outside in the heat of the day. It will burn your leaves. You want to do it uh, before you go to bed at night, before the sun sets, go outside and spray it. Or if you're inside, it doesn't matter then. But uh, you want to use this stuff. Make sure you hit underneath the leaves as well as on top of the leaf. You can spray this on the soil of the pot of the plant and uh, it'll work both ways for you. Good stuff. So when you use that neem in fungus, I see you, you rub the leaves after you after you. If you spray. get any type of fungus, especially with uh, powdery mildew on, my, on the rose plants, mm -hmm. we get certain, certain uh, roses like Mr. Lincoln uh, is very susceptible to the uh, powdery mildew. I spray it on it and I rub it with my, my finger, next day it's gone. Powdery mildew so, is gone. This yeah. stuff really kills. It's, a, it's an antifungal. It's an anti-insect. The way it works, mm -hmm. if you get the good stuff here, it is an insect growth inhibitor. inhibitor, which means that the insect cannot go from the larvae or from the egg to the larvae to the adult stage. Mm -hmm. It can't. It dies, and they they eat and consume they eat and consume the neem oil, and that's what it does. It does not allow them to, to go through their metamorphosis. The uh, the soap. The detergent actually has another purpose, not just an emulsifier, it also suffocates the insect, mm -hmm. uh, they, they can't breathe. So, so a lot of people will use just pure insect yeah. soap, or just insecticidal soap mm -hmm. in their sprayer, and they get fairly good results, but not good enough. This this is the one-two punch. So if you are going to use uh, soap, guys, to emulsify the neem oil, use a soap that it is uh, mild, I would suggest to use a uh, botanical soap or use the Dawn. Use because Dawn. Dawn because it, it, it doesn't create soap or soapy, so it is easy for you to spray. Okay, I got one other thing for you. I'm not going to demonstrate it because it's so simple. Anybody can do it. You got problems with slugs, you get yourself a little cap. You can take a styrofoam cup, cut it so you only have like an inch left, and put it about, fill it about halfway 
with the cheapest beer you can find. <laughs> beer traps, we call them. They call that beer trap. If beer traps. traps thing, like yeah. bear traps, these are beer traps. You place them in your garden wherever you're having a problem with infestation of slugs. Mm -hmm. I think it's the yeast that's in the beer that attracts them. It's and a these, fermentation. Yeah, yeah the fermentation, fermentation. They will actually go in there in the morning. You'll come, you'll have 10 or 12 slugs drowned. They're dead in, in the beer. Change the beer out because they will start to smell after a couple days. Mm -hmm. So get rid of them. Put some new beer in there and you're good to go. Mm. Work all these different angles. Mm. Put the yellow sticky paper. Use the beer traps. This is just a, this is the <laughs> Use oil. the neem oil. The neem use oil. everything yes, you can everything. to get rid of and them. And I also noticed that uh, one day I used the Epsom salt. What I did, I spread it Epsom salt underneath the base of the citrus and I don't water it. I water first the citrus that in the in that day, and then the following day it was a little bit dry on the top surface. So I applied the this uh, Epsom salt, and I noticed that when the slug crawl on that salt, it dissipate. It's just like what happened. So when I saw it, the there was no slug. The slug turns water, and that's amazing. So you can use Epsom salt to apply it. We've also tried the ladybug where we've ordered thousands oh of ladybugs and just let them loose in the greenhouse <laughs> hoping they would eat the aphids. That was and expensive ladybugs. The ladybugs, the only thing they're trying to do is get the hell out of the greenhouse <laughs> any way they can. They're all up in the cracks trying to find a way to get out of here. Well, after doing some other research, you can't just have aphids. They have to have certain plants in the greenhouse to maintain or to keep them inside the greenhouse. They, but they were just wanted to, they just wanted to get the hell out of here. And I'm like, forget that. We're not yeah. doing this anymore. This was an expensive... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> environmental okay, at least, project at least we try you know if you want to go into organic you have to do something that it is not harmful i, I remember when well, my gosh way back when i was teaching agriculture and we used these chemicals that you have to wear you know gloves up, up to here and you have this gas mask because the air once it comes to you you know it it is not good for you and you have a lot of protection so use as much as natural product as you can, but keep in mind you need to read the label of the, of the uh, products that you use in your garden. So know the, the product because if you don't know much about it, you are ending up ab applying it in the wrong target. Also guys, a lot of our plants we're going to be selling this year on eBay. Um, so keep, keep watching for our channel. I'll put a link in there when we start posting some of our plants. But we have mm -hmm. a lot of different kind of pepper plants. I like to sell the weird stuff, not the stuff that you can get. We don't sell the stuff you can get at the local garden stores and stuff like that because it's too competitive. But beautiful things like the desert roses and some exotic flower plants and stuff, the Hoyas, um, mm -hmm. different kind of plants that we have. I've got some beautiful apple blossom geraniums and pink rose geraniums. Mm -hmm. A lot of things like that. So keep your eyes open. For the links when we put them down below yeah, they'll be coming up here this week okay all right so all right this I'm is, done. so this is for today guys so again so that, so that is the the way how you control infestation of your citrus plant not only just citrus plant it also applies in other uh, type of gardens or other plants that you grow now what i do here i'm going to show you have to hold on all right guys so i'm going to show you one of the sensitive plants that mostly uh, doesn't like name and if you apply too much it fails so if you have a hibiscus and then you, there's so much so many apples in your hibiscus you can use the name powder the name powder is not as much damage as opposed to using the name oil so what I do here I just spray the spray this is name one teaspoon of name mixed with a quart bottle of spray and you just spray the leaves like that so this would take care the uh, test and then after I do it, I massage it because I'm going to uh, squeeze that aphid. So by just doing this is like a maintenance and it doesn't hurt your hibiscus. So don't apply hibiscus with neem oil. You can apply neem powder mixed with water. So I hope this, this, guy, this video helps you guys and thank you for watching. This is Marcelina and Greg Steven and see you next week. Peace out.